Hey everyone. Welcome back. So today we have a uh, Toshiba laptop, an older laptop. This is a uh, Satellite L655-S5101. Uh, and it has a... Oh, wait, where is it? Busted DC jack. Uh, looks like maybe it fell here. Um, so we're just going to replace that jack and get it all squared away. So we'll start by taking the battery out and taking all the screws we see out. Okay, so we have all the screws out. Uh, just keep in mind that right there where my screwdriver is, is a little screw that needs to come out. So don't overlook that one. Uh, the hard drive is just one screw holding it in right there and then it just slides out. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is going to be the uh, part of the power jack you know, where it plugs into the board. So. Just before we get to that part, I'm just going to unplug it now because it needs to be replaced. So might as well do it while we have this like this. Okay. So now flip it over. Okay. So now we have it flipped over. So we're going to have to take this little plastic piece off that's holding the keyboard in. So just get like a, you know, spudger. Just kind of gently because this is, you know, fragile plastic just kind of get under there and try and pry it up and that was what that one screw we took out is and this is not it this spudger is not very good so let me see if I can where's the best area to get under here there we go so just find a good spot get under there and then just gently lift it up and you can see that's where that screw that's under the battery screws into so just put that aside now there's four screws holding in the keyboard. We don't want to take those out. Okay, so screws are out, and I'm just gonna take this keyboard out. Okay, keyboard's out. Unhook it. Put it aside. And always, you know, when you're unscrewing laptops and stuff, always just, you know, make a mental note of the screw sizes so that you don't end up putting the wrong screw, you know, where it shouldn't go, and then could cause more damage like in this case though you know these are all marked like uh, m2.5 times 65 so just you know if you keep those all together maybe even write it down on like a piece of paper and then put them on that piece of paper then you'll know that these screws go with those markings uh, Toshiba's are pretty straightforward um, they usually don't, you know, mess around with throwing a couple different size screws next to each other, uh, like some Dells and HPs and stuff like that do. All the screws are out, so we're just gonna unhook motherboard, or this is probably the trackpad, most likely. Um, 
speakers we probably don't have to unhook. Uh, I don't know. It's the power button, probably. We might have to unhook that just in case. So let's do that. Okay, so now with all the screws out, we should be able to... Oh, we did not check under the... Yeah, uh, yeah. Under the optical. You know, the CD drive. That there are screws there holding the case in. So that would not be good because we'd end up cracking the case and stuff that we don't want to do. So always check under those. Lots of laptops like to have screws under there. Um, so be sure to check that. I'm glad I remembered to. Okay. So now, now we should be able to get our spudger and just kind of work it in the seams here. This spudger is terrible. Oh, look, it's broken. I have more. I'm just too lazy to find them. Oh, this thing's coming apart easy. I wonder if it's been taken apart before. Oh, we do need to take the speaker out. I lied. How dare you lie to me! Okay, speaker connector is out, and now everything comes out. So, charger is just right there. Try it. So I just need to take that out of there and then follow the cable and replace it. As I hit the camera a hundred times. So yeah, oh geez, yeah, it can. Oh, is there? There might be a screw holding it in. No, no screw. It's just destroyed. Look at that. Gee, wonder why it doesn't work. And we already unplugged it from before, so makes our lives a little easier. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Works great, I'm sure. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a little damage here from my probably where it was pushed in, but I don't think it's going to affect the functionality of the replacement jack because the groove and everything there's a little notch here that you line up and that's what actually keeps it in place I mean honestly you could maybe put a dab of hot glue and if I feel that it needs that I will do that but I try to avoid that whenever possible because if it doesn't need it then you shouldn't do it okay so we have the replacement jack this is the little groove I was talking about so that's on the end of the jack plugs into uh, yeah yeah I guess you can kind of see that uh, so I'll just plug that in there and then feed the wire Just feed this through and under the, to the other side of the board to you know where we unplugged it before. Run it through this little channel. And it did not run through all that well. It's getting caught on side. So there. Okay. Okay, so that's in that channel. 
All right, and that should be good. That's not going to go anywhere. And honestly, once you put the optical drive in, it's going to hold all those wires down. Okay. And that's pretty snug. That should that should be fine. There shouldn't be there shouldn't be any issues there. And now we just put it back together and test. And I'll just, uh, for the sake of your sanity, speed that process up. Oh, and you didn't didn't need to take this apart. So I knew there was one you didn't have to take apart, but I just guessed the wrong one. All right, and here we go. Now, honestly, I probably should have uh, tested this thing before putting it, you know, back together. But I'm pretty confident that that was the issue. I mean, you saw how damaged that jack was, and that this will fix it. That I didn't want to do that, or at least I don't feel like there was a need to do that. And that being said, it'll be you know the time it comes back to bite me. Also, I hope it goes without saying that just, you know, make sure you plug the jack in. Into the board, this bottom side. And it's, you know, it's notched where it only fit one way, so you can't really mess it up. But there's... Well, how do we get back here? Well, remember that time I said uh, <laughs> I should have tested this, but didn't because I was pretty confident that it would work? Well, still pretty confident, but the thing is, I put the jack in upside down, and I'll show you what I mean. So if you see, well, now that it's actually up, it can't really see, but so it's in upside down, and that means the power adapter will never fit because, you know, you it's like, oh geez, hit the camera. You know, it's like trying to fit the square block into the circle hole. It's just not going to work. So don't be me, kids. Idiot. Do it the right way. Flip the jack over. Now put it back. Put it back in. Tug on it. All right, it's pretty good. All right. So now, now we should be good. So. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. So yeah, don't be me. Uh, but luckily, with the magic of editing, we can skip to the part where it works. Okay, now we have it back together and the jack should fit in. Yeah, we can get the, uh, you know, circle into the circle hole there. There we go. Past the uh, first grade now, or probably kindergarten or before that, honestly. <laughs> But all right, so it's plugged in. We have a charge and light. Yeah, so battery's charging, adapter's plugged in. Should be good to go. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, again, don't be me, test your stuff. Um, but you know, I could have edited that part out or just kind of gone right to here and be like, hey, it's working, but you know, that's a common mistake that people might make. And I wanted to show that. And obviously, you know, I still make this mistake. Um, but yeah, that's just some of the stuff that could happen. But it was, you know, just cost me another extra five minutes. So whoop de doo But if you, you know, test it beforehand, you would have been fine. Uh, but anyway, thanks for checking out this video. And we will see you guys next time.